Hi, good morning. I'm Jane Moore and I'm uh, part of the Martinez Oral History Project. I'm here with Shirley Skardoff um, on the banks of Alhambra Creek at the um, family home of the Pellegrinis in Granger's Wharf. And uh, it's June 7th, 2014, and we're here to interview Danny Pellegrini. Thank you, Danny, for joining us. I'm really excited to hear the stories of your family's history and your escapades as a young man in Alhambra Creek and Granger's Wharf and in Martinez in general. So can you just give us your name, where you were born, family's uh, names? My name Daniel Lucian Pellegrini, was my mother uh, thought it was a wonderful name. I was born in Martinez, June 13th, 1945, with the community hospital. I think Dr. Edmonds was the doctor. I think, I'm not sure. <laughs> or it could be Dr. Matthew, but it's one of those two. Good and and where uh, where did you first live when you came home? Uh, I I I think I was first lived at 1104 Amber Avenue. Okay. <clears throat> That's at the corner of Mellis. We owned a property there at one time, and then I was uh, raised there until I was about uh, about fifth grade, sixth grade in 1955 uh, or 57. Between 55 and 57, we moved to 2251 Alhambra Avenue. My parents just built a brand new home at that location. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was raised until I moved on to my To your current home, current life. right. Yeah. So all of your youth, you lived really just right in a couple of mile yeah. radius. Italian community, the Portuguese Flats, you know? Right, it's, right. It's that group of people. So is this actually the area we're sitting, is this actually called Portuguese Flats or is it Granger's, is Wharf? Granger's Wharf? Okay. A uh, little, little Italian village, whatever you want to call uh -huh, it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And I know your grandparents, both sets came from Italy, is that right? They both came from the same town, Rimini. Okay, and that was your, your father's parents, right? My father's parents. What were yeah. their names? It was Luigi Nicholas Pellegrini. Uh-huh. And my grandma's name was Augusta, and I don't know her middle name, but Augusta uh, Colonna. Colonna, yeah. okay. And tell us the story about them coming. It's just a fascinating story. Your grandfather and your mother separately coming here to Martinez as young yes. people. Um, my grandfather left. My understanding left uh, Rimini was about 12 years old. He had a big family and they wanted to get on his own. And you know, nothing was going on in Italy that would give them any work or whatever. So. Uh, Beautiful train, huh? I know oh, that we oh, get boy. the ambiance of the train. Martinez train Always station that behind us. Beautiful. I love that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, you have him getting on a ship, and he worked his way from Italy to the Mediterranean to, to New York or whatever, and um, worked in New York for a, a little while in the shipyard or something. And then mm -hmm. he got on this ship and came around. South America, but he got around by towards Chile, and where uh, the ship sank. So him and a few other guys made it to shore. He stayed uh, in Chile for, I guess maybe a year, year and a half, before another ship came and took him back to New York. Oh, really? Yeah. He couldn't come on straight this well, way. Well, no, that was they went. They were coming the other way. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. So they went back to New York, got on New York, got on this ship. And came back around the horn again and sank a little further up north or, yeah, north of uh, Chile. Another place, a boat went to ground, they all got off, waited for another ship, and then came to California. What year was that about, do you know? No, I don't. I okay, couldn't. okay. So he's like, you know, 13, 14 well, years old? Well, he's probably around 15, 16 now. Jeez. 17, Imagine that. he got here. So what brought him to California? I don't know. I can't answer that. Okay. And you don't know why he came to Martinez specifically? Well, I, I can tell you that. Okay. I'll get to that point. Okay. Um, from my understanding was when he got to San Francisco, he came east towards this way. Mm-hmm. He ended up in the Fernandez Ranch oh. in Pinole. Okay. And he worked on that ranch. Wow. For a number of years, I guess, uh, as a, who knows, as a field worker or working in the orchards or fishing or whatever. Whatever he could do. Whatever he right. could do. And uh, stayed there for a while and then came to Martinez because some people he heard were from Rimini. Oh. And they were the Chavese family. And they were already here. They were here. You know where what people know it used to be a Morgan, used to be a hardwood store, mm -hmm. kind of a hotel, boarding house area. There was a little shop in there and 
Cesar Gervaisi and Katie Gervaisi had a shoe store, shoe store and he repaired shoes. Well, anyway, that's how they met. So did they know the Cheva Did he know no, the Chavezis in, in Rimini? Because people used to say, these people from Rimini, these people from here. Right. And they got to know, maybe they knew him. Right, right. They weren't in but maybe Rimini. didn't he know him back home. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Well, anyway, they ended up being close friends. But then the Bianchis, my grandmother's aunt and uncle, came, and Bianchi came first. And the, what the information I have, he came in 18... 72, his name was John or Giovanni. Mm -hmm. And he had a pair of mustache with a big handlebar. Handlebars, yeah. <laughs> well, not really big, just to come out there, you know. And then I guess he came here and he bought this property that, that we're on, sitting on now, okay. And then sent for his wife. And you know, I don't know her name. Was this your mom's side or no, your, this is my grandmother's, your grandmother's? Grandma, okay, your yeah. father's mother. Uh huh. So they came here. And they settled in this area. And they had a boarding house. Where we're sitting now is a boarding house. Oh. It's like Marizani's across the street. Right. Same kind of size. Uh-huh. They took this area in here. And they had uh, had 12 rooms in it. Uh-huh. With a big room downstairs. And uh, and the room was like a big kitchen like. And Mrs. Bianchi was a lady that took care of the boarding house. John Bianchi. Mm-hmm. Had a transportation company, oh, which he called transportation. He'd take the workers from the boarding house to Nichols, which is Passport, Chicago, right, or to Payton Hill to go to work. Then he'd pick them up, or he'd deliver stuff, whatever, and come back. She'd do the washing, the cooking, and everything to keep the boarding house going. Right. And then uh, they had no children, so they sent for my my grandmother. And uh, what I understand is. My grandma had an older sister who was supposed to come, but something happened to her where she comes so they took my grandmother and sent her to America. Just went down there and said, hey, my daughter's got to America. Anybody take care of her, bring her here. She but traveled she by herself, by too, herself, didn't she? Yeah. How old was she? Pretty think, young? Somebody she was like seven. Oh, my gosh. Eight years old. Oh, my gosh. So she ended up in... In America, that way. So she had a reason to come here because her aunt, yeah, and her, a, her yeah, aunt and yeah. uncle were here running a boarding house, and they wanted her to come. And well, they wanted as a, a child or sure, to raise sure, an opportunity in America. Opportunity, absolutely, exactly. absolutely. So she got here, and she came across, my understanding, by train, when she got to New York to get to Martinez. Okay, by train across the United States. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. And anyway, um, she had him coming here and then my grandfather through the Gervaisis met my grandmother mm -hmm. and passed on and here we are. And here you are. Yeah. yeah. What about your mother's parents? Um, my mother's parents were from Palermo, Italy. Mm -hmm. In the vicinity of. It could be um, either the Thimini, it could be San Vito, you know, any of that area. It's all like Port, Port Costa, Martinez. Okay. Dustin okay. Holmes, all that. Yeah, that Maybe. close proximity. Uh -huh. And uh, his name was uh, was Frank, you know, and it was, um, my mother, grandma's name was Catherine. And Elucido. Elucido? So, yeah, but she was a Costanza. Oh, okay. So I ended up in Martinez, and uh, he was a whaler. He whaled, he fished in Alaska. Oh. Worked at Shell. And that's pretty much what he did. Uh huh. But uh, we had a lot of family. We had uh, more Lucidos, the Brunos, the Russos, the Romeos, all related. All dad, related. All, all sisters and brother type. Uh huh. Amazing. So, anyway, yeah. So then they had a lot of siblings. Three of them died, and the rest made it to. Uh, they had one son, Vincent. There was Francis, Rosie. There was. Um, Sarah, Peggy, which Petrina, my mother. Petrina, uh -huh. And then there was uh, uh, Natalie and Josephine. And then they had, like I said, three siblings that passed away. Wow. I don't think I forgot anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so your mom and dad both grew up here. My, yeah, my mother grew on that side of the tracks. My dad grew up on this side. Oh, so very close to each other, but. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then how did they meet? 
Oh, I'm sure they probably across the drags three or four times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was a real, the whole Italian community, everybody did everything together. Yeah, and, it right? was. I mean, I know there's pictures somewhere of bocce ball tournaments and stuff going on here, you know. Right down here. Yeah. And then, like, like you said, my dad had another brother, which was Luciano, which is the next oldest. There was a gap between the kids. Mm hmm. And then there was Gloria and Louis, Louis were the youngest. And um, Your dad was born. the oldest? My dad was the oldest. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And Luciano was next, and then it was Gloria and Louis. Louis. There's a story behind Louis and Gloria. Yeah. Charlie Palmer, the chief of police, and my grandfather had a bet. <laughs> and the bet was this if it's a boy, my grandfather would pay for the barbecue, the big party. <laughs> and if it's a girl, Charlie Palmer would pay for the big party. Well, it was a boy and a girl. Oh, so twins. They both paid at a hell of a big party. <laughs> so they were twins. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> then my brother was the same age as the, as the twins. Okay. They were a year apart, uh -huh. Anthony. And he was born and raised here. So how many, so you're, uh, who lived in the house here behind us? Well, my grandmother, well, my, my dad and my mother lived in the house with my grandparents. Okay, okay. And then there was Luciano and the twins. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my brother lived here for a while. And then he moved to 1104 on Hamburg. We owned that property. Okay, okay. So he moved there. And, that, and your brother was what? How much older than you? 11 uh, 11 years? 11 years, Anthony. Yeah, yeah okay. Anthony. Uh-huh. So then you yeah. came along later and, and I, lived yeah. there. You never lived here. No, I never lived here. I was always here, though. I bet you were. I grew Constantly. Up here. Yeah. Yeah. My footprints went through here many times. Was the boarding house still here when you were oh, a yeah. kid? Oh, yeah. We didn't tear that down until... Um, was it an active boarding house when you were young? No. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. There was people living in there. There was a... Upstairs, there was a... Uh, a black woman and a... And a little Italian guy that uh, got to be... This is, I'm trying to get a story across. Uh-huh. I can tell you how they got here. During the war, my grand uh, uncle and this guy were in a band together in Pittsburgh. He had a, a band. You Is know, this a, World War II? Yeah, orchestra uh -huh. like her. Oh, sure, yeah. Marching band. Right. And they were looking for a place to live because Pittsburgh had no roof for because they had the, the Stoneman. Stone, yeah, yeah. Camp Stoneman there. Camp so Stoneman, right. They were looking for a place and my grandfather had this place upstairs. Sure, sure. So this guy came and talked to my grandfather about renting the house. He says, yeah, no problem. In those days it wasn't like you gotta have your day, yeah. your work. Right, yeah, right. You're gonna be able to look at it. Yeah. So we'll take it. So this guy comes up and he moves in and and this person, this black lady named Elizabeth came with him. And my grandfather looked at him and he goes, who are you, you know? And he goes, this is my wife. Oh, okay. You know, they didn't know those days it was no whatever yeah, the hell it is. Right, right. So they moved in. And in the middle of this this building, this where stairs went upstairs. This big room they had a piano. And they had to get it upstairs. Oh. It was a narrow area. The piano just fit in there perfect. So you got three or four guys at the bottom pushing, two or three guys a rope trying to put up these stairs, trying to drag it up there, you know, and guys are cussing and they're yelling and you know, <laughs> saying, What the hell is this? and what the hell that? And these people are, are nuts in Italian. So they used to play cards downstairs. Uh huh. In the big room. Yeah. And they're playing. This guy comes down, Mike, and he's looking at him and introduced to everybody, you know, and they're all talking Italian. And you know, this guy's the one that married this black lady upstairs. And he's moved in and they're talking about the, the piano, all that kind of stuff. And pretty soon the guy says to him, he goes, You know how to play this? He's all oh, wrong move. And the guy looked down, you know how to play the Italian game? He goes, yeah, I'm Italian. So he started talking to him in Italian. Uh -huh. They didn't know what to say because they made fun of this guy. Oh, in Italian, and they in didn't Italian, know he spoke know, Italian. Italian. Exactly. <laughs> so it was kind of a, you know, but they lived here for all my life that I know of. Really? They moved out was probably in 1960. Huh. 67 or 68, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she used to call me gangbusters. She called you that? Yeah, because I was always tearing up stuff, doing, <laughs> you know, doing different things. Right, right. There, right. Getting in trouble, you know? Yeah. Gangbusters, so she... what are you doing now? And they were great people. I loved them. They That's, were... oops. 
let's get you hooked back up here. They were very nice. They were they had a good family. It was it was really interesting people. Isn't that nice? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, those were the days when people just used no, to. No mixed marriages were never. No. But they were together for a long time. That's great. That's great. So um, the boarding house was here. And I know, uh, okay, obviously you have a very colorful childhood because we all know a lot of those stories. But, I mean, growing up right here on Alhambra Creek, which is so different now, the channel is so different now. And I, I think that you've told stories, I've heard them about taking boats all the way up into downtown, up to where the plaza is. Well, I used to take my little skiff, my little rowboat. Uh-huh. There was bridges that you couldn't get with the bigger boats. Right. They may have at one time. But in my days, I got up to where Starbucks is down a little rowboat. Right, we're right. We were just playing pirates or whatever we were doing. We'd play up down the creek, go out in front of the creek, have a little sandbar in front, take Angel Costanza, Tibby Miller, Gritty, all these guys, Dura, and drop them off. On the sandbar? On the sandbar and leave. Angel Costanza. That was out here in the in the strait on yeah, the sandbar? Yeah, just around here. There was a duck blind out there. And, of these stilts. Yeah. So I took Angel Costanza. There was Angel Costanza and one other guy. And I left them on there. Did they know that they were just going for a boat ride with I you? I threw them off. <laughs> I was bigger than they were. Yeah, I was going to say. They weren't going to argue with yeah, you. Get off. Get off. Get off. <laughs> get out and roll around and they cry, you know. Come back here. I think it was Lawrence Miller. Come on back here. Come and get us, you know. And I'd go back and get them and stuff like that. But well, you made them sweat it out for yeah, a little I mean, while. Yeah, yeah. We had yeah. good twists. It was fun. I bet it was. It was I really bet fun. it was. And yeah. when, when your grandfather was, uh, so he was a fisherman, and you used to spend a lot of time with him, helping him out. You guys were very close. Yeah, you? we had a my, we had a fish business here. Okay. And uh, there used to be a building right here, right behind us was a two story like a warehouse building. Right. We used to call it the shop, but that's the fish house. The old building right behind us. Okay. Was the fish house. The boats come up the creek, had a big sliding door. Throw all the fish in the dawn, uh, they weigh them, clean them, and ship them to San Francisco. So they processed them right in there. Right. And then how did they get them onto the boats? Where did the boats for San Francisco? Or you said they? No, no, they brought by truck. They okay. Them. Okay. So they drove we them had by these truck. ice boxes in here. Uh huh. And every other day during salmon season, Union Ice, which was over at the corner of uh, Pine and the Marina Vista and Escobar, it was a big okay. ice company. Okay. Big ice there. company. They would deliver ice to these. To these refrigerator these box box, one made out of concrete, uh -huh. and then one was made out of redwood. With when we tore it down, it was all full of sawdust. Oh wow! Two walls, keep the ice in there. Mm -hmm. Then they would take the ice, throw them in the fish, load them in the truck, and take them to San Francisco. So who drove them into San Francisco? The Your grandfather? No, no, the, oh, the, the company trucking that company. They brought it to, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were caught out in the strait. Sam and Jan. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. But then, what we also, my grandfather used to do is deliver fish mm -hmm. out in the country. Out in the valley? Out in the valley. You go to, uh, you go to, you go out to Nichols, Port Chicago, Concord, Clayton. You go to Danville, uh, Dublin, like in that area in San Ramon. And we used to go to Moraga, uh -huh. in the Walnut Creek and all that area and deliver fish. So he had a a route that he go to. Refrigeration kind of no, box? No, nice box, an old wooden box, uh -huh. back of a Model D Ford. Oh, really? So you rode with him. And was he delivering them to people's homes or yeah, to, okay. business and homes. It, okay. Wherever he had his business. We used to go to uh, um, uh, Biscayas at a bar, the B&B in Concord. I remember that was the first stop in Concord. Then we we proceed up Clayton Road and there was the Garavanas, uh, there was um, um, the Garavan, I'm trying to think of the name of the people. Um, um, I can't remember. These all were all restaurants? No, houses. Houses. So what do you, he'd pull up and they'd come out and he'd come out, show them what, what do you want? Sand dabs. And my dad used to get sand dabs. The guys would come from San Francisco, bring other fish. Uh huh. And then we would. Oh, you'd buy them off and. Well, they do whatever they do. Trade them yeah. around, yeah, 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 sure. Barter them out, yeah, yeah. and then and then the people who the people just come out and pick out what they wanted. You yeah, weigh them, and you weigh them, and then he, then he then he packed them up and he used his newspaper. Oh wow! All the lead we gave away. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then you'd be that, weren't you, his money man? Yeah, because he didn't, he knew money, but he didn't know how to add in money. Uh huh. You know, you know, you know, two bits, four bits, six bits, a dollar. Right. Know? 
but you know, you got nickels and dimes. And so you you handled yeah. all the finances. Everything was, everything was kind of rounded off. Right. You know? Sure. Sure. So my brother and I used to be the one got stuck to go with them. Mm -hmm. Uncle Junior or Louie didn't have to do that kind of stuff. He cleaned the fish, so oh. he was out of it. You know. Yeah. Sure. I'd rather ride in the truck than yeah, clean the yeah. fish. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know about that. <laughs> Long ride. <laughs> Long day. Yeah. Get in the box. Get a fish box. Had a fish box with fish. Yeah. Then you open the top up and all the illegal fish is up there. Illegal fish. Private bass, whatever they weren't supposed to sell. Why weren't they supposed to sell that? Well, they, it was against a lot of sales, striped bass or, or sturgeon. Oh. So they had all that fish up there. So they just caught those. They didn't set out to catch them, but they ended up catching well, they, them in their the nets. Bring them in nets and they, yeah, sure, sure. They would give my grandpa. In those days, it wasn't like... Was it all net fishing? Yeah, all net fishing. Okay, yeah. and so then they did they hang the nets out here, or they hung the nets at the racks over that side of Granger's Wharf. Were those the tanning racks or the they were, drying they were racks? Drying racks. They were uh -huh. tanning. What they were the tanning, tanning racks about? What was that? Well, there was um, we had one here. It was a brick. You can see one laying right here. It was, there, there were there was a brick stove we had. Uh huh. With a big metal tank in it. Okay. And they take wood and they throw wood in there and they take the tan bark. And boil the tan bark. Okay. And tan the nets, the cotton nets, so it wouldn't rot. Oh, that's why. And okay. Tanning do it so. Oh, so that these, protected the net fabric, so it wouldn't right. rot when it's. Oh. And the nets would go in these these in these box these concrete boxes uh -huh. around. That's where you stored them. And yeah, and then they would tan them, uh -huh. let them sit for a few or four days, take them out, bring them down there during the rack, and dry them. Uh huh. Then they use them. And then how did they only have to tan them once, or no, yeah, they kind of keep three, doing it every time yeah, when they wore out, keep wherever, them protected. Yeah. And they always work on them up there. I got pictures. I'll try to get those pictures for you. Uh, so they had, so they just repair them and sit around yeah. just like you've seen. And they all I mean, those were all your uncles doing all that. All those your, relatives and yeah. families, and it, it, it was, was the a, Giannos, the Chandries, it was the Romeos, it was uh, the Ferrannis, the Brunos, the DiMaggios. Everybody was out there. So the, so the whole family shared in the business, and then they all shared in the profits, and they shared in well, the no, work. My, grand, my dad would buy fish from the Conte Cost Historical Society has my dad, some of my dad's fish books. Oh, wow. Who he bought the fish from. Oh, his logs. I wanted uh -huh. them back. Uh-huh. I was going to give half to them and half to the Martinez. Martinez, Museum. sure. This way they have both have records. Sure, that'd dad. be really great. Tells the names, the Giannos, and uh -huh. the Romeos, and the Chambers. So he kept logs of everything. Yeah. And by state, by law. Uh-huh. Oh, sure. I guess we had a bunch of pound and all that stuff. Because your father took over the same business that your grandfather right. did? exactly. Okay, okay. So he basically ran the business with my grandfather. Uh-huh. So we would leave. My grandpa and I would leave in the morning early. How old yeah. were you when you were doing this with him? Five, five, six. Okay, so five. you weren't really in school yet. No, I was in school, in at school. Uh-huh. Different times I'd go with them. But anyway, we would go out and visit people. And... uh we go to one place, get some cookies, coffee. <laughs> he talked to ladies, and then we we would go to Danville, and we would go to the in the old days, the old road to Danville. We go through the uh, center where we had big eucalyptus trees, and we'd have lunch there. Uh huh. He'd have a little wine, his sandwiches, cheese. Then we eat. Then we go to the the ranches, and we sell to the people that most of them were remember were Filipinos. Oh. That worked on these ranches. Sure, yeah, that's right. And then um, we would come home and, you know, put, 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 you know, it wasn't very fast. No, was, I bet that was. Guys beeping horns at us. Day. You know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I could see you with this the little most, kid. The most of the experience I had with my grandmother was, the best one was, we went to Moraga. And it was a Sanders ranch. I think it was either Sanders or the Brazonia ranch. The guys out there owe my grandfather money, so all they wanted to do was pay him, but he couldn't. Didn't have the money to pay. Money to give us those mm -hmm. days, so I was probably maybe five or six. This is my most one. They gave him a steer. Oh. So he tied in the back of the, the oh. Model D, and we butt butted home. With the steer running behind. Right, yeah, and we were late naturally. Right? Of so course. They come looking for us, and they found us in uh, Lafayette. Going over the hill from the Louise Valley. Yeah, oh, up road. and over? Yeah, Not sure. The new road. No. The old road. Okay. So we took it and we put it, they brought it to uh, the Rossi family at a ranch out there. Uh huh. So we brought the, the steer to the Rossi's, and then we, from there, we came home, 
and my dad had Steve uh, Lawrence had a freezer in Walnut Creek, butcher shop freezer. That's where my dad used to store a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. And they had they killed it and they butchered it and we ate it. Um, <laughs> I can just see you, the steer going behind the mountain. There was another uh, story. When I went to work for the county in 1965, there was a guy named Joe Nunes that lived out on Finley Road in Danville. Okay. He told me my grandma used to come out to sell fish to him. And he told me that if you go out the ranch, and there's probably some poles still there, but fist posts, uh -huh. my grandpa said, you owe the money, he'd go out there and mark with hexes or marks on the pole, tell you how much money they owed him. Oh. And you can see where they, he cleaned slate, he get a knife and clean the Oh, okay, the, clean the off pole. the X. Pole would get these little notches in them. Uh -huh. You get little bevels where he cleaned it off, you know. So that's how he kept track. Yeah. <laughs> And then I got a call from uh, <laughs> Bev, Bev Lane from East Bay Regional Parks. Mm -hmm. She, I guess, is at San Ramon Danville Historical Society. Want to know if Luigi Pellegrini related to me? <laughs> because when he used to go sell fish out there, yeah. he used to serenade the women. They can hear him come and sing an opera. Oh. But he used to have just worse than buggies those days. Too. That was before you went with him. Before I go he with didn't him. serenade when you were riding with him? Oh, I don't remember. I you probably were sleeping. <laughs> tired, you know. I would imagine you'd remember long that. Ride. <laughs> what a long ride. But he was quite a character. I love him. He was a good guy. Yeah. He called me Lily. Lily? Hey, Lily. 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 Yeah. Lily. Come on, Lily. And how old did he live? Did, did he uh, live 80, to be? I think 87. Mm -hmm. 88. Mm -hmm. And he used to tell me, I used to get in trouble when you get mad at me, you know. Never spank me. Never mean me. He goes, hey, remember, I'm your father twice. <laughs> Remember, you father twice. <laughs> well, his name's on the plaque down at the um, yeah, yeah. Ferry Point yeah, with yeah. all the Italian yeah, families. Yeah. And, uh, it, yeah. you know, that's quite a list. Yeah, I noticed grandpa. there's only one surname of Pellegrini, though. There's a lot of Belechis, a lot of yeah. Russos, but there was only one surname Pellegrini. Yeah, my grandfather. Uh huh. I thought Anton was on there, too, but I guess not. Uh, no, it just says Luigi Pellegrini and family. Okay, that's it, that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it doesn't have other listings. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. We're the only ones around, I know. Isn't that amazing? But you're, you're related to all the other ones. Like my other, my mother's parents. Okay, so your mother's side was related to yeah, everybody. My, my, my grandfather had uh, brothers, sisters. Sure. All came to Martinez. So those are all the Russos, the... Uh, yeah, uh -huh. the Brunos. The, the Brunos. That group, yeah. Yeah, but your father's side was smaller and just... Well, yeah, we were related to the Saviones. Uh-huh. I was his sister, and he brought, came to, to America, Savioni family. So he brought uh, his other siblings from um, Italy came? My grandfather Luigi, no. Mm -hmm. oh. no they all, they stayed. Old, they all, they don't know what happened to him. You know, he was the oldest, he left, and that was his it. sister came, and he says they all died or whatever. They died, I don't know, nobody knows. Did that. you ever go, have you ever gone back? No, my aunts and uncles, my brother, my mother did. Uh huh. We went back there. That was quite a trip because you think about it in those days from the opposite side, from the Adriatic, you know, at such a young age to just... When I mean, you think about them coming here. Yes, yes, at such a young age what, and the determination and the, yeah, just the whole quest. You couldn't do that today. No, no way. I mean... You couldn't bag your bags up and come to America and not have a dollar. Right, right. All you survived was no... No medical well, your parents days. would get arrested if you were 12 years old and left home to go do that. <laughs> and he, you know, and it was, he had to live on something. Yeah, right. By his intuition and his hard work. Yeah. So one thing that's interesting that I'd, I, if you could tell us more about this, and it's partially from my own curiosity. I know that there were a lot, that there were a lot of small towns right outside. Um, Fairview, Peyton, Nichols. Were they all out on the waterfront road direction? Yeah. And uh, what was, you know, how, they don't exist anymore. How, what was well, that? No, I can tell you, I can't tell you a lot about Fairview. Okay. Or Nichols or, or uh, Peyton, but I can tell you that when I know, when uh, there was a small community, there was a, there was El Selmo's out there, and there was um, uh, the Cochamillo family. Um, I think there also was, um, the De La Rosa family out there, all lived in that area. And why it was there, probably because of community, Fairview was probably when they started building Shell. Yeah, Fairview people, was where Shell is now. I know some uh -huh. people were coal miners. 
Oh. That came from wherever he came down, down here to live, and they ended up down here somewhere, only maybe because of General Chemical was at Baton. Uh -huh. That's how those people got there. Okay, okay. And so it was kind of a company town. Yes. Okay. And my first wife, Susan Lombardi, family was from Baton. Oh, okay. And they moved to Port Chicago when they tore down Baton. Uh huh. Because General Chemical went to, to Nichols. So they went from every gun he moved around a little bit. So that's how my grandfather knew the Lombardis and those people going through, like the Bianchis, mm -hmm. going back and forth and him selling fish there and stuff like that. And then also him taking the workers who stayed here at the boarding house out there. Exactly. To work. So, yeah. they, so they really were kind of smaller company towns, is that? Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, so, yeah. Because yeah. I just think it's so interesting that I, I know people who grew up in Fairview, Rich Bobrovsky. Yeah. Um, grew up in Fairview, yeah, and um, yeah, exactly. yeah, and I just um, I find it yeah. so curious that there were these little towns. Mike Alford, really? Where? He, oh, yeah. Yeah, he said he was from Mountain. Yeah. Yeah, he was from Fairview too. Yeah. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah, they're still here, and they, you yeah. know, um, those are stories yet to get in this whole yeah, little project. Um, like I said, Nichols, my uncle, my aunt Gloria, mm -hmm. the youngest of the, of, the, of the kids. Her husband was from. Italy, but he was raised in Nichols. Oh. Anibali uh, at uh, Marangoni. Anibali was born in Italy. Right. He went to be born, or born in Italy, came to America, ended up in Nichols, and his parents went back to Italy, and he went back to Italy, then came back and lived in the Marazzani family. How oh, funny. Because they're related. Okay, right. So he came back. When he came back to Vermilly, uh -huh. he ended up in the Marizani family. Huh. But he was born so in Nichols. That's what me and my aunt, they haven't gotten married. Wow, didn't go far in, from... He was born in Italy, but raised Nichols, Nichols. back uh -huh. to Italy again. Uh -huh. So one of the th places that you've uh, circled back to in your adult life is Rankin Park, right? Rankin so you Park, started yeah. out there as a kid. Yeah, we had uh, a lot of fun in there. I bet you did. And um, so you just, I mean, you're just a bike ride away. Yeah, from, from here. All, from, no, well, from here, but also in Amber, there was, mm -hmm. we had a gang of guys, there was... Who was Kenny in the Mac, gang? Tom Gertie. Yeah. Ronnie Tura, Guinea McNamara, the Miller family, the Millers, Tippy, Lawrence, and uh, Prentice, and Johnny Gray, and Stedmans, and the boys, and we all would go up to the park and watch them play baseball and stuff like that. Go swimming every day. Mm -hmm. Then we used to take a, a rope string uh -huh. used to get from here you know and tie it and pull the bell and the night guy that used to live at the park would come out and chase us around <laughs> you pull the bell what was the bell the bell on the train oh the train down at the amp yeah what used to be up there used to be up there yeah. sure so you'd pull the bell and get the banging because it was all locked you'd be up. hiding up in the woods or something up pull in the hill but across the hill so they couldn't see you and you'd yeah, just be exactly and so would who would come chasing you the neighbors used to live at the, the city had a caretaker lived there in a little house. Oh, for where the train was? Yeah. Uh -huh. There used to be a monkey, he had a monkey cage there. Oh, there really? monkeys in there. Yeah. So you'd go up and do that at night? Yeah. Yeah, ring the bell. And sure, run. sure. And just uh, typical young guys having fun. Having fun. Yeah. And then we used to have a party there every once a year. we have all the kids get together and have a big Up barbecue. there at the park? Cook pasta and yeah, have a big time. Wasn't it great? It's just a great park. Good town. Yeah, it is a good town. It is a good town. So uh, you you weren't at the opening of the of the pool, but that was some place that you used to just go to all well, the time. They were, they were too young. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that was, was probably, before your probably time. Before my time, but right. I mean, going to the pool, we used to swim every day. Every day. And if I remember mistaken, it was like a quarter, and they had these hot tamales, and they were like a quarter each too. Yeah. And they were delicious. Mary Hatch and I were talking about the other day about where's the tamales? Where are the tamales? Yeah. 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 So did you swim in the creek also? Yeah, we were kids. We swam in the creek. And out in the strait? On the strait. Spent a lot of time Sandy in the water. Sandy Beach. Uh-huh. Where's Sandy Beach? It's uh, not there anymore, but it's down by the railroad tracks. Okay. Down by the uh, SP. Uh-huh. Used to be a rock out there. had a pipe that went out. Uh-huh. That's where Sandy Beach was. So that's all been filled in or? No, just over the years. Just overgrown. Deteriorated. And uh-huh. Yeah, not the same. Yeah, yeah. And the older guy used to call it Bear Ass Beach. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Go by and they'd probably <laughs> stick their butt out. 
I don't remember doing it, but... Of course you never did that, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, what are some of the other, uh, what are some of the just highlights, things that you remember that were so great about being in this town and having the communities of the Italian community, the Portuguese community? What were some of the other groups, you know, that, I mean, there was just such a strong family sense in this town. Well, you know, we all went, I went to St. Catharines. Right. And, you know, we had, when I went to St. Catharines, we had a mixture of everybody. Mm -hmm. We had the Calderons, we had, um, um, I don't think we had any Asians going to school at that time. But it were Italian, Portuguese families, and um, we all grew up. I mean, it was like, we did everything together. It was all, mm -hmm. my house was open to everybody. My mother always had lunch for somebody. We would, I would go home for lunch. She had food, anybody came with me, it was food for them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We played baseball together. We played flag football, go to the boys club with Nino Blanchi, mm -hmm. Joe Saunders and those guys. Have a hell of a good time. Mm -hmm. Take us on a an old truck they call the Tanner truck, whole piece of junk, a Navy, whole Army Navy truck, all junky inside. They take us to play baseball in Pinal and Richmond and uh, uh, Bella Vista. You know. So you actually time. had a real team, or this? Yeah, was we just... actually had a team. Uh huh. It was a boys club team, or oh, the boys club team, or the CYO team. Uh huh. Yeah, it was all group of good old guys, you know. Yeah, yeah, who are still here, a lot of them yeah. around today, and all See still him, yeah, friends. Still talk about it. Isn't that something? And then uh, Alhambra High School, class of 64. 64. Go dogs. <laughs> and I'm sure, did you, you participated in the big uh, reunion a couple of years ago, didn't well, you? Well, I went to it. I didn't stay long, but... Yeah. I see most of the people I know anyway. And right, that's true. You're here, you know, so yeah, it's well, not... Um, I didn't miss anybody, really. So you and Tom Grudy were really good friends. I hear you uh, you, you were kind of um, not really the sports guys, but well, uh, we weren't sports you were guys, on the football team, right? We were on the football team, but we, didn't, we were rebels. Mm -hmm. um, everybody would do laps, and we would be in the locker room getting dressed and making our taking our time out there because we knew we had to do it. Yeah. But we thought we'd take our time and miss a lap or two. But yeah. It <laughs> Did, didn't work out that way. How, how'd that work out for you? Yeah, uh, no, yeah, no. Well, they kind of... He used to call the gold as twins. And I remember the coach Jackson would say, Grady, Pellegrini, quit for <laughs> Get your butts out here. You know, we got there, we'd run. And... What do you make? You make up the laps. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we, those we, coaches we, then we do. Then one time we were talking, that day Grady and I were talking about our brother. Mm -hmm. We were playing against a team in Napa. And then this big running back, about 240, tough guy. You know, we were sophomores in high school, you know, and they put us both at defensive tackles. <laughs> And this guy come running up, and I hit him, Gertie hit him, and he kept on going. And he went for a touchdown, you know. We came back, and Jack says, what don't you guys do? We hit him, coach, we stopped him. He said, he ran for a touchdown. Our brother come back, and he goes, what the hell happened? That's what happens when you get guys up there, instead of train them like you train you guys, and run them through the berry patches. <laughs> you get it strong. <laughs> but we couldn't remember why he was so good, you know. And yeah. Jackson chewed our asses out for him. Not nailing that guy. <laughs> but your hearts weren't really in yeah, it. Yeah, no, we were. Yeah. It was just that our teams never won too many games. I don't know. Well, then, you know, then there's the Alhambra teams that did. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some really great um We great had a lot teams. of fun. Good. Yeah, well. Good times. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the transitions that happened down here in your lifetime has been the change to this waterfront park. And I think, um, you know, in like 1960, when the um, women of the waterfront Nancy came down, Fadden, yeah. Nancy Fadden, um, what was that? Talk a little bit about that and the change well, that started kind of to funny. happen. You know, Nancy and I go back a long ways. But anyway, I'm down here one day and moving around and I'm looking. Here's Antone come walking down. And I didn't really know Antone. We were kids, you know, but not really a lot, you know, real good because he used to go to military school. Antone. Antone Fadden. Okay. Lyle. Okay. He used to go to to private schools, okay. they were never really growing up in town. Mm -hmm. So they're out here and they're looking at and they're pointing around and Nancy would go for walks down here. And it was a dump. I gotta say, it was a dump. And that was just beyond your family's home there. Yeah, right. Right, yeah. right there. But when I grew up, there was houses down there. Oh, really? There was, uh, the Romeos lived down there. The Sims family, it was a black family. Mm -hmm. The Sims family and um, the Rizzo's lived down there and I remember 
those houses aren't there anymore, but no, on the other gone. side. Yeah, uh -huh. On the other side there, it's all uh -huh. marsh now. Right. Up by the bridge. Uh-huh. Anyway, she came walking down there with a bunch of women, and her, her point out that it was Dorothy Miller, who was uh, Lucy Gordon, who was um, uh, Nancy Holmberg. It was a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. And they were looking out over this thing. Also, one day, here come Anto Vad, and they had a bunch of kids, and they picked all the garbage up. They had dumpsters. Shell came out, put dumpsters. Mm -hmm. They cleaned that whole place up. Unbelievable. Were job. the houses there then? No, everything was gone. Okay, they've been gone. Okay. All garbage. Picked uh -huh. up the garbage. They took everything away. Wow. It was an amazing job. Wow. And they made out a park, and they put the bridge across. Yeah, and then they put in their brick, the famous brick walkway. Yeah, Anton did. Uh -huh. Oh. They would go to Port Cost to get the bricks from nothing. Uh, from the brickyard. Uh huh. And they made a then he put it all the way out around there. Right. To the bridge and then right. over the bridge. Uh huh. You know, it was an amazing job they did. Yeah. I thought it never happened. Then we put she Nancy Nancy had she opened a bocce ball courts. Oh, is that how the bocce ball courts got on the other side? Yeah, they were here first. Oh, they were. Okay. And we played bocce here. Uh huh. The first playoffs were here. Huh. Was against uh, uh, my uncle, myself, Jerry Valenny. I don't forget it was somebody else, and then uh, we played against Santi Seri, Paul Pagnini, Trost, and they beat us. They beat the hell out of us. We weren't good. We got beat. <laughs> but you probably had the best we time. Got, yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> we had. We got to that point of the second best, and we did get second best. Oh, okay, out of okay, okay, okay. But definitely first and fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had some good times down here. Yeah. Really good. So that really changed the whole um, face of the park and, and probably um, how people started thinking well, about this the park. When the cannery left. Oh, okay. That was really devastating. Was the cannery here when you were growing up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can look right now and they had these cooling towers right here. Mm hmm. And the pipeline would drop by with a the fence right there. And Tomato juice would go down the creek. Really? And striped bass would be this big, swimming up the creek. To get to the tomato juice. Or whatever they're going to. Yeah. It was full of fish. Wow. You'd be able to catch catfish, uh -huh. carp, bass. Just right here, five right here, feet right from here, where right we're here. sitting. Right yeah. here where we're sitting. Yeah. All the fish you wanted. What year did the cannery go away? I guess again, it's 66, 65. Uh huh. About that time. So that was right after the... the Maybe the 70s. Yeah. It was that, that group. That 10-year period really changed yeah, everything did. down here. Yeah, it did. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But they, I guess um, the good thing about the cha the cleaning up of this part of the waterfront and moving the bocce courts over to where they are now, you know, it really brought the whole park, um, yeah, highlighted sure the park and, and brought people down to it to yeah, and sure created did. to what it is now. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. And eventually it'll be bigger when they're going to redo the baseball field. Right, right. Yeah, but uh, what about flooding? That's a big, that's oh, always yeah. been. You're right here, right here in the water, right here. Yeah. Did you, when you were a kid, were there a lot yeah. of flooding? As long as I can remember, it was flooding. Always? Every year? Every year. And so it would just come up into the cannery house, into your fishing pack house, fishing house? Or, uh, into the boarding house. house, into your family no, home? No, never got, it got here, but never into the house. Okay. But, um, yeah, this would be all in the water. And was the creek was the creek channel a lot wider no, than it is now? Narrower. Pretty much the narrower. same as it is now. No, a little narrower. Narrower, but deeper. No, same. Okay, okay. So the the flooding was due to um, run off of them and the tides down here because yeah, you're yeah. right at ground zero when it comes yeah, to the tide change and the runoff we're from the hills. Below ground zero. Yeah, yeah, you are. According to the world, we're sinking. <laughs> but I've noticed a difference. Have you? In the height, yeah. In what? Well, the, this room here, mm -hmm. when I was a little kid, the water never came inside the building, but now it does. Uh huh. At high, high tide. And just at high, well, it has at high tide or yeah, when it's high, flooding? High, high, high tide. Yeah. You see the Hasn't for died. a while. The King Tide. The King Tide. Whatever they call it. Well, since they created the waterfront um, pool, you know, the marshlands out there, have you seen an improvement? Well, I remember when uh, the mayor at the time was Mike Mendocini. Uh huh. And Tom Powers were down here one day. And I stopped talking to him. I said, What's going on? Oh, we're checking out. You know, we get wider now. There are no more floods. 
I said, I'm going to come and get you in the floods. It'll never happen. That January was water three feet in front of the house right there. I remember that January. That two, was... Two, two Januaries, two different times. But uh-huh. One January and then a gap to another January. I got movies of the water coming from Marizani's, which never used to come from over there. Really? Because wow. all that was open over there. Okay. More water. We had more water than I ever seen in my life here. Wow. Wow. Always up those windows over there. Really? Unbelievable. But never... But the house... We get a little bit of water in the house. Uh huh. When you were a kid. But the pumps would take it, you know. Uh huh. Keep the water out of it. Right. Historically, always flooded. Yeah. Well, it's kind of at that point. Yeah. I mean, that's where we are. What were these posts that, that are here alongside? The tiny wall. Okay. Yeah. And then the the pulley, the winch here was for the boats. Well, no, I'd, we had a renter here. Mm hmm. Had aluminum boat, and we just closed it. The arm that's sticking out like this. Uh huh came off one of the fishing boats, the Nick, that was uh, my dad's partner, it was Nick Jondro. He was from Italy. He had a boat they called the Nick, and he fished out in the ocean, mm. and they fished crab out of it. And that's what they used to use to mm. pull the crab pods up. Okay, right, right, right. And we want to go through it, put on this head thing, turn it, pull the rope, mm -hmm. pull the crab pods up. So we came off of there, and he had a little small aluminum boat, so he made that thing, and Put his boat, oh, put his boat in and out. Yeah, 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 pretty clever. Did your family only fish here in the strait, or did they well, also fish out in the ocean? Uh, my dad fished in the ocean crab out, out in the Point Reyes area. Uh huh. And then my uncle Louie and myself, we fished in Alaska for salmon. For just for sport, though. No, no, for commercial. Oh, did you really? Okay, yeah. when were you doing that? Well, I, my uncle was doing it from. Um, well, we had herring fishing too. My uncle did herring fishing also. Wow. He and my cousin Johnny Romeo. They were partners in fishing for mm -hmm. herring and up in Alaska. Uh, no, here. Here. And then herring uh, salmon in Alaska. Mm -hmm. yeah, I used to go with them. That is hard work. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Yeah. Um, they worked. They worked hard. Yeah. Um, I would go. I think I started going in '78. Oh, that was so. That was when you were working and you had. Um, Free time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd go up to work two, two, three weeks and come mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. take my vacation. So when you graduated from high school in '64, uh, Vietnam War, and you got drafted. I got drafted. Yes. Yeah. What happened with that? It's an amazing story. Yeah. When I got drafted, I didn't want to go. You know. Of course not. And there was the uh, the draft office was right here in town, right? It was right next to Connie and Taylor. Hmm. Interesting. The funeral Very home. Yeah. Very interesting. Oops. It was very interesting. We had this buses in the old days on Amber. Avenue was narrow with big shoulders. And the only one was out there was Kirk Carter Ford, Connie and Taylor, the Colin Bank Egg House, the draft board, and what else? It was John Muir home. Mm hmm. And that little building next to John Muir. That's all that was out there. And it was in, hmm. I remember the, 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 all the buses were heading out out of town, facing nose first. So then when you went to the draft board that morning, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people. From all over Contra Costa all over County. Wherever, yeah. uh -huh. You went in and you got, you know, P to O to P or R to whatever, and you got, that bus, you got in that bus. Number, get a name. Oh, so they get the, the letter was which bus you were going to get on. Yeah, you got okay. Bus, whatever okay. Bus you get. So we got a Greyhound bus, and I remember ours was right, like, right at the entrance to, to the uh, Connie Taylor. Mm -hmm. So I got in, and I sit down, and I'm sitting in the aisle. Do you know anybody on the bus? No, not in my bus. I knew guys were there. Mm hmm. Conquer and and Martinez, I can't remember their name, but the guy that's next to me was sitting there and he goes, yeah, we're leaving this place and may come back to this place. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, what? <laughs> you, know, you know, we couldn't get killed there. That's all I need to hear. Yeah, really. You know, you're on your trip to the, to the draft board. So we get down here. Where'd you have to go, Oakland? Oakland. Uh-huh. 
we go to this big place and it's open and lines and people everywhere. So you go to this line and they give you a thing and you fill it out, put your put your a bag of your clothes. All you're done, your underwear and socks. So you go through and they talk to you in a little bit and then go in and it says, uh, you, you don't have any problems or bones or anything. Well, I had an operation on my knee here. And looked at it and says, what you have? I just cartilage removed. All right, then you go into that door there. <laughs> so you went in there and you sit down and you wait your line and chair by chair by chair, you know? Yeah. Get on the doctor and goes like this and takes my knee and he hits it with a thing and he goes, well, you got to go to that door over there now. Jeez. So I go to that door and the guy goes, all right, put your clothes on. Go to that area and sit down. We'll call you. So I put my clothes on. They don't on. tell you anything that's going on. No, you just, you yeah, over there. right. So I get over there and it's about 20 or 30 of us there. And he goes, all right, you guys. There's a bus outside. Get in the bus. I took it to San Francisco to Letterman's, Letterman's Hospital. Hmm. So we get over there and now it's about 1.30. Took us all through. You see all these papers, take x-ray in my leg, and the doctor looks at it, go in the other room and sit down and wait. We're there in a little bit. Well, a little bit, it was 5 o'clock. Jeez. I'm waiting for somebody to come and see me. Yeah. Nobody coming yet. They pull a guy out, pull a guy in. Pretty soon nobody's there. There's three or four of us. So he gets to me and brings me in. He goes, I got bad news and good news for you. He kind of has kind of a smile on his face as well. Give me the good news, I guess. Mm-hmm. He says, the good news is I'm giving you 4F. You're out of the military. The bad news, you got to get a ride home. <laughs> and I said, no problem. Yeah, I can handle that. Thank you very much. So what'd you go do? I went to pay phone and call my, call collect home. Uh-huh. And my mother had the phone. I got my brother and, and the Lombardis. Remember the Gervaisis that I told you about? Mm-hmm. They had a daughter named Alma. Uh-huh. And she married this guy named Steve Lombardi. Okay. And they lived in San Francisco. They're Gervaisis. So he came and got me, brought me to their house. I waited for my brother to come, and he brought me back to my house. Wow. Day. Wow. Yeah, there was no bar, no car. No, 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 no. What a, I mean, kind of made the long days with your grandfather look pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you. Did your brother serve in the military? Yeah, he was in the Navy, yeah. In in Vietnam? Um, all my, my uncle Luciano was in the Navy. Uh-huh. Uh, he was on a on a destroyer, what they call the Renshaw, uh -huh. which was torpedoed. Okay, that was in World War II. Yeah, he uh -huh. survived. Then my Uncle Lewis was in uh, the Air Force, and he was in Vietnam before it was Vietnam. He was called Indochina. Okay. And he was a uh, mechanic in the Air Force, and that's when the French were there. Mm. Then he got pulled out of there. When the French left, he came back and and uh, went down to San Antonio and came home. Then Anthony went in the Navy. Went to Japan. He was right at the end of World War Two, you know, June, all that mm -hmm, kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we never saw any war or anything. But. Mm -hmm. That was fortunate. Yeah. Served his time. Wow, that's quite a story. I mean, did what was the mood like in Martinez? Because there was so much um, protest to the Vietnam War. Was there a real? Did that happen here? Was there you know, a real I, presence for that? Did you notice the only it? I remember is the protests were. I worked for City Martinez when I got to high school. I worked. Mm -hmm. I worked at Canary for. A little bit of summer. Right across the yeah. a creek over here. Uh huh. And then uh, the city was uh, had a student worker at that time. Angel Costanza, my cousin, was working for the city of Martinez. He was going to go back to school, so I went down and talked to uh, Ralph Vetti, and he gave me Angel's job. And I worked with Vic's uh, with um, hard stores and the Packer truck. It was a yellow truck, just big up debris, like. Uh, you know, vegetation stuff like that. Yard waste stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Me and Kenny Fivella. So we worked on that for a while. And then Kenny got drafted. But I stayed, I stayed home working. Is that after you got your 4F? Yeah. Or, yeah. So then what happened was uh, they were going to lay me off because I was too young to work for the city because that would be 21. Mm -hmm. So I had to be working in front of Nick's place at the time. And we're cleaning out a sewer and, and Paul Huey was the city manager and uh, 
What was Nick's place? Nick's used to be a restaurant where the Moose Club is now. Okay, okay. Nick Bang and he owned it. Okay, so it was, it was a Paul's. club or it was a restaurant? Paul's, was a restaurant, right? I've heard Paul's. of Paul's. And it was Nick's. Okay. Yeah, a relative cousin. I was going to say, the same last name. Yeah, so they yeah. each had restaurants in town yeah, yeah, at exactly. the same time? That was Armando, Roy Amon. Roy Amon. Roy Jeans. Jeans. Uh -huh. That was his grandfather's restaurant before Nick took it over. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Uh huh. Anyway, so we were cleaning out the sewer and and uh, like I say, Paul Huey came out, and um, Phil Satchery, which was this is the city public works director, and it was um, Vic Sowers, which was the public works director for Contacost County, and um, the other guy was the guy from the union, one of the union guys. They had lunch together in there. So they came out, and Paul, hey Dan, how you doing? I said, okay. He said, they talked to you about getting laid off. I said, yeah, I know. And he goes, hey, Vic, you got a room for a guy like, we have to lay this gentleman off, he needs a job. Well, maybe we can do that. He says, uh, come down Monday morning, we'll see you. So I went down Monday morning, he wasn't there. <laughs> so I had to go back Tuesday morning. Well, I got him getting a job. With the county? With the county. Uh -huh. I mean, the Lafayette, I've been there, it was ever since. Yeah. Sort of temporary labor, I mean, Superintendent retired. You were doing what? What were you doing when road you first department. started? Road department. Yeah, road department. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then I you went, got injured, so you moved up. I went into the office uh, was on uh, light duty mm -hmm. and worked into a job in there because I got to learn. As long as I couldn't do that work anymore, so they wouldn't retire me. Mm -hmm. But they said, no, we got a job for you. We'll put you in the office and give you a job. And so I stayed in there, and then they made a supervisor out of me, and then the superintendent, and I retired. 41 years later. Wow. All from just hanging out in front of Nick's Club. Clean the sewer. There you go. The sewer workers in advance. <laughs> the illustrious, illustrious career from a sewer treatment or it, sewer it, cleaner, yeah, isn't that? Sewer yeah, but that's how this town kind of happens, you know. Yeah, we always it's, took care of everybody, took care of each other. Yeah, and it's just the small it's town nature of it. Yes, it is. Yeah. You know, it really it's is. still really, but really the politics. Still a good town. Speaking of Paul, so Danny, what what uh, made you want to run for the Contra Costa County Water District? It wasn't that I wanted to run. It was I was told to run. Ah, uh, who told you? Uh, Nancy Fadden. Nancy Fadden. Nancy Fadden. The La Machine. You used to call it the La Machine. Uh, the La Machine. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what it was was we were out there one day. We we're we we're all talking and and uh, just a joke. It was just a joke. And we're talking about the Purple Canal and. Her and Sonny McPeak were talking about this Purple Canal, and somebody needed to run against Ernie LaSalle because great guy, great family. Yeah. You know, they've been in Martinez forever. Ever, yeah. And he was for the Purple Canal. They talked him in thinking the water from the Purple Canal would do Martinez a lot of good, and the county a lot of good. But you know, it just, opposition was nobody from town wanted to run against him. So Nancy tells me, he goes, you're going to be the candidate. I looked at her and said, what? Because you're running against Ernie Lizzo for a water district. You know, why not? Run against what? Why not? So I had nothing to do. So we, the last day, the last half hour. To file. To file, we file. Yeah. And that just sparked everything in town. Everybody you know. running. No, these people went, what is he doing? Oh. They're going to kill him. They, they were going to kill me. Because you were running against... Yeah, everybody. So my dad was downtown when it was announced in the Mega Gazette the next morning. Go look at you guys run to sell. I never forgot I went down as guess water district director, 12-year incumbent, being run against Pellegrini. And what year is this? That was 1980. Okay. So we apply. I go go out and get the thing and I get a lot of phone calls from different people. Are you nuts? Are you crazy? And yeah, whatever. But anyway, Gertie called me. Tom Gertie called me. He goes, we're going to get him, Dan. We're going to go get him, Dan. <laughs> well, everybody thought Gertie was the guy, was my main guy. Mm -hmm. It was Anton Fenn. The background was doing all this, oh. all this stuff. So him and Tommy would get together. And he would call each other and what are we going to do next? And they would coordinate. Plan your campaign. Yeah, plan right. my campaign. Right. You just so had to show up. I had the union against me. 
I had a lot of people down against me. And my dad comes up to me one morning and he goes, I just saw Phyllis Wainwright. Now, they're related to the cells, I think, somehow. I'm mm -hmm. not sure, I think. He says, you give me $25 for your campaign. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Yeah, twenty five dollars yeah. anyway. So I bought signs. I spent about a thousand bucks on political signs. I had no money. Nobody gave me anything. Mm -hmm. I had a guy in town had a little shop in the back of his house, and he printed all these these printer things top of the canal. Mm -hmm. Anton, Nancy, and we all worked on brochures. I had all these little school kids that I knew, my daughters and their friends, handing these things out. Mm -hmm. And then I had a guy, John Ginogio from Concord, who was a good friend of the family, took Concord by himself with the Clayton Valley wrestling team and plastered all our area in Concord with signs and these things. So I had a small group of people. I had $25 given to me hmm. by Phyllis Wainwright. That was your big campaign truck. That was it. Chest. That was it. I loaned myself money. So they get your money back. And your whole platform was the, against the peripheral, peripheral canal. canal. Uh huh. So they took me in and they're going to do a debate. What is going to get my ass kicked? So Gertie calls up. Well, Nancy called up. Called up uh, the Gazette. No, take it easy on them. No, don't be too hard on them. And then uh, um, um, Keeble, Pat Keeble, mm -hmm. says, okay, I won't be too hard on you. I'm going to. I'm beyond you. So I'll never forget the opening statement. I'm against the Purple Canal. This is the reason why. You know, take the water out of the Delta. You gotta take care of the Delta. Anyway, so when it came to the debate, I didn't really do too bad. Because all I said was, Ernie's right. We need good quality water here, but Purple Canal is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. You know, and he said, I said, yeah, but Ernie's right, but. Yeah. Why, yeah. Anyway, when the campaign came, I beat him by. 600 some votes. Uh -huh. Danny's relatives all voted for him. <laughs> <laughs> and so well, then you, thought, you you went on and ran. Well, let me tell you, and let me tell you something. After I beat him, yeah. the next day, you can't believe the war chest I was getting. No, <laughs> everybody wanted to give me money. Oh, everybody's on your bandwagon oh, then. God. We love $100, Danny Pellegrini. Here's $500. I don't want anything. Good for you. Good for you. Bad, you know? Yeah, good for you. But you ran um, re-election, re-election, re-election. Never ran. He had no run against me. No, right. But then until the water just got in trouble. And I was about tired of that crap. Yeah, way, but yeah. So by that time you didn't. 12 years. Yeah, that was a long time. I voted for you. I figured, you know. Time to get yeah, out. yeah. Well, your other hat that you wear, no pun intended, is your chef hat here in town. Well, you, I have other things, too, you know. Uh, okay. I've been on the Council of County Vision and Wildlife Committee oh. for 30 years. Okay. I did not know years. that. Thank you for saying that. Uh, I'm on the Skittle uh, Bateman board. Abatement board? Abatement board, uh huh. Yeah, I was representing City Martinez. Good. I've been on that for 15 years. And then I'm, I help cook down in sportsmen. Sportsmen's, but you also do not just sportsmen's, you're you're all over the place helping out. Oh, with, yeah, then with I'm any also kind of on function. The East Bay Regional Parks Advisory Board. Oh. Ted Rackey pointed me to that. Oh, good. And you so say you're still doing that? I'm still doing that. So you got a lot of. Um, Fires in the fire. Yeah, you do. You do. I do so barbecue you may for be, the sheriffs. And, yeah, and you do them for a lot of benefits. Yeah, yeah. So you just pull out um, your team and. We move. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not only me, I do. You got to remember, there's, there's a group of guys. There's, right. You know, Paul Gelly, Tom Borman, Keith Ferguson, mm -hmm. Tony Medina. And what we do is we do for everybody. Anybody calls. If somebody called Tony and said, we need you, hey, you guys want to cook? Yeah, let's go do it. Or yeah. call, or we do it for anybody. And just, you guys have all been friends for so all, long. Yeah, you yeah, just, yeah, it's yeah. second nature. Yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it's really wonderful. I know that you've um, donated a lot of your time also, along with the board you're on, but you've yeah. also done a lot of community service things. Lots. Just, which has made you such a great, well-known. How many hours I can spend. Yeah. And how much barbecue we did, how much meat we cooked. Over the years, so might kind of might kind of um, knock you out if you really knew all that information. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's get a little bit about your family before we wrap up, because I want to make sure we get them, you know, acknowledged on here. So you married your first wife in 1966. Okay, yeah. and what was her name? Susan Lombardi. Okay, and she was from Port Chicago. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we met. She was working for Marizani's uh, the cell uh, beauty shop at the time. Mm -hmm. I met her. And 
I was working down over the city, and mm-hmm. we ended up uh, getting married. We had two children. What are your daughter's names? Uh, Danielle, uh, Kelly, now Pilgrimy Kelly, and then Michelle Ferguson. Okay, and they both live here in town? Both live in town. What are they doing right now? Uh, Danielle works for Conicost County. Mm-hmm. Uh, Community Development is secondary. Mm-hmm. And then Michelle works for, what is the first student? Pre- um, uh, on Soto Street, the preschool? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. The preschool. Good. She's been there for many, many years. Right, right. And they've, they've got kids and... Oh, of course. Michelle don't, I mean, Michelle don't have children, but mm-hmm. Danielle has uh, Courtney and, and John. Okay, so you're a grandpa. Grandpa. That's a good thing. And yeah. then uh, now you're married to Linda Peebles? Linda, Linda Peebles. Uh-huh. How'd you meet her? I met her on a bus. <laughs> She was driving the bus, wasn't she? Was she? Driving the bus. she said, "Go to the back of the bus." Go to the back of the bus. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you get married to to uh, uh, we Linda? We got married in 1985. Uh huh. Been married since. We got two kids. Uh, it's uh, Jana and and Jane, two stepchildren. children. Okay. Then they got kids and. Wow. Oh. Um, yeah. Clay and Chase and Jana's and and. Uh, uh, Landon is uh, Jane's, so they all live and work for the county. And so everybody's here in town. Everybody's in town. Born and raised here, well, and Concord in town. Yeah. Yeah, but close, close enough. Yeah, yeah. So you've really kept it all. Uh, I guess you didn't keep them here, Where but else is there? yeah. <laughs> Why would you go anywhere else? That's exactly. what I'd like to know. And uh, for somebody who's an import, you move here and it becomes your hometown. I mean, what, what does that thing? The Bianchi to show up, Martinez. That's the story I would love to find out. Uh huh. And you know what's funny is the Bianchis. Going, yeah, when we cleaned this place out when when we sold to Kevin, I found my grandma and the grandfather's birth certificates. Oh really? Somehow they got. I found the will of the Bianchi family to my grandmother. Uh-huh. I found a lot of documentation. Uh, I even found a thousand shares of the plywood company it was across the that my grandfather bought. Huh. It was across the creek over yeah, here? Yeah, I got the, 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 I wonder if there's a little business. It's a fantastic document. It's worth some money. Yeah. It's all, it's pretty nice. Uh-huh. Actually, it's got some gold stuff in it. Real gold, you can. Those scrape. are fantastic artifacts. Yeah. I need to bring, I'm going to, I'm going to give them the uh, Historical Society. Okay, that would be great. I know yeah. that um, the Martinez Historic Society would love yeah. to have those items. I got more stuff that uh, Scola has. Uh-huh. I think I get from him. Okay. And, uh. I have a, I had this old uh, fish scale. It's somewhere either historic society got it or East Bay Regional Parks has it stored mm-hmm. somewhere. It's so big that for them to, to mm-hmm. do some with mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. have some awards and stuff to give to them and some more documentation and stuff, whatever. Well, you're the keeper of uh, you're the keeper of all the stories, and I just want to thank you so much for sharing the stories you have. I, I know it's this. the tip of the iceberg with you. Oh, we could I'm, we could go on for hours, I'm hours, sure. Hours, hours, hours. Well, we'll just have to do it another time. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much, thank Danny. You for all right, me. great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.